Hello, welcome back to my my podcast and YouTube channel at Sonia Kelji. Today I have Neha with me and we connected actually through Instagram. I have shared often about how I struggle with makeup. One of my new year's resolutions for this year was to actually learn it. And I, I feel like I've been improving, but Neha actually reached out via Instagram and offered to help teach me a couple of tricks. So that's what we'll be doing today. Neha, before we do that though, could you possibly tell us just a little bit more about yourself? Of course. So I am Neha and um, I live in DC and makeup has been my hobby, my obsession, my passion um, ever since I was like 15. And um, back in the day, I wasn't allowed to do makeup. Like my parents were super strict, but they were like, you can do it after you get married or once you hit 18. And the second I got 18, I'm like all into makeup, just doing it, going all out. And I've never looked back. Well, it looks gorgeous on you right now. I am barefaced yeah. since I know you're going to be walking me through this yes, process. Yeah. So literally straight out of, the, out of the shower, this is, you know, what you get. <laughs> but I'm excited to learn from you today. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you. So All righty. So. You had asked me about what I have in my bag, some of the staples. So let me go through that. Um, I'm still old school. I'm still using the this contour palette from Anastasia. Um, I've got, you know, of course, mascara. Um, I started using this winged eyeliner stamp. It has helped me tremendously because my hands shake a lot. So that's been very helpful. Uh, I've got my eyebrow pencil, of course. Uh, I've got some highlighter here, uh, blush. I've got some lipstick uh, line, lip liner, um, lots of brushes. Woo concealer okay. just put this up. and let's see what else um bb cream i'm actually out of foundation so that's one of the things that i am missing you don't need foundation every day so you're good yeah i actually really hate wearing foundation a lot anyway just because right. it feels very cakey so i tend to stick with bb cream more so um let's see i've got some nail polish and stuff in here some lip gloss lipsticks i'm trying to see what else i have oh and then of course i've got my um eyeshadow palette right here one of them i've got multiple but this one has like the most colors and stuff right so it could work perfect pick that up i also have some magnetic eyeliner and i have some magnetic lashes um, on me. So that's just something that I'm starting to get a little bit better at, but I don't use that for typical every day or anything like that. Gotcha. But yeah, that's right. kind of what I got in my bag right now. And I, I know I mentioned to you when we were not recording that my toddler has gotten into some of my makeup. So I'm missing things like primer, foundation, some brushes and stuff. So mm -hmm. I don't have my full set with me today. That's really cool. All righty. So we're going to talk about your face a little bit, just so you can know your features better. Um, and I did send you a face chart with like, I wrote everything about your features in it. And I hope you get like, that's going to be handy for you for sure. Um, but I'm going to start with your eyes and we're going to talk a little bit about your eyes. So the first thing that not a lot of people understand is having a hooded eye is not like, they're like, you cannot put on eye makeup if you have a hooded eye. And by hooded eye, I mean, um, that the lid is actually folding in between your eyelid, like the upper flap of your eye folds your eyelid in. So when you open your eyes and look straight, all you see is this part of your eye. I have the same issue. So um, one thing you would want to do about that is, um, literally I have everything written down. So we're gonna start. Um, you're just gonna use a little bit of concealer on your eyes. So you wanna grab your concealer. Okay. And we're gonna put a little bit on the back of your hand. Okay. And then you're gonna use your fingers and kind of dab on the outer corner. So with hooded eyes, what happens is the fold over here kind of gets visible. So you're gonna put the concealer on the outer eye, like the outer half of your eye. Okay. So and just look right. Right. And one thing that I've seen you do over and over again is you're too harsh with your face. Like, so the trick here is you're supposed to, literally the skin of your eye or the skin of your face should not move. It's like you're kind of tickling 
Got like it. that could be the intensity of your pressure and the yeah, I'm realizing I'm realizing I gotta make the zoom um video call. Okay, there you go. I can make it bigger because I can't see myself that well. So I feel like I'm doing it kind of blind right now. Okay, got it. Okay, okay. got it. Got it. So that should help a little bit. Should I do the other eye as well? Yes, ma'am. So just right in the corner, you said? Yep. And make sure you dab it. So every, the best practice is your ring finger, but I kind of have a habit of okay. my middle finger. You want to tap, 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 tap until it's all blended. And the warmth of your fingers is going to kind of blend it in. Um, one more thing that I prefer for hooded eye, line, um, eye shape is... A lot of people want to use a winged eyeliner. And like you mentioned, you have a winged stamp eyeliner that has been helping you. Um, what happens sometimes is, I don't know if you if, if it has ever happened to you, if you use a higher angle of your wing, when you look up, the fold on your eye kind of hides it and it kind of has like a dent in it. I don't know if you've yes. seen that happen to you. Yes. All right. So the best thing for that is kind of go straighter out if you really want to use a winged eyeliner but something that I would do because I don't know if you can see but right here I would just stop because like this I have my entire eyelid but every time I kind of look up this goes in between the fold so I cannot really work with winged eyeliners so okay. we're now that you have your concealer on we're going to use a cool toned brown okay or a brown eyeshadow, um, something like this, like this, like this, just to get started and kind of warm up the crease. And okay. would you, if you have a fluffy brush like that. Okay. Look, can you lower your brush down just a bit? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I should have a fluffier one. And the best thing that I would tell is okay. the brush should fit the size of the area you're working on. It's going to be your biggest help. So if a brush is too small, it's going to require your effort. If the brush is too big, it's going to end up looking really muddy. So if the brush should be the perfect size of the area you're working in. Got it. Okay. I just okay. love talking about makeup. Sometimes I get I just no, I love, I've always heard hooded eyes and I didn't even know what that meant to tell today. Well, you learned something. <laughs> now I know. Okay. And so. one practice for hooded eye, now that you're doing your eyeshadow, is either you want to look like you're going to, if you can see me right, is you're going to hold it with your eyes open. Okay. And you're going to see directly in the mirror and you're going to place your brush exactly where that fold is. Okay. So with my brown... Mm -hmm, like a softer brown which is not too dark okay so right. and then I see you putting your hand like that if you do it this way it's going to be a lot better okay and I'm, then I'm very clumsy I'm letting you know now like you're totally cool all right okay. let me zoom you in um perfect so taking a brown shadow and using the brush like this okay. and I see you struggling so or you could do is, do you have a mirror in your hand? I need a mirror. I think that's what's going on. Or let me see if I can put my phone up in front so I can see a little more clearly. Mm -hmm. Okay. But also what I like to tell people with hooded eye is always, and a, as a best practice, is you would want to use your mirror right underneath your chin. So you look down and you have the entire eyelid okay. visible. So if you put a mirror right here and then you look down here, you can see your entire eyelid and kind of work on it. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Um, now I do have something set up right here. Can we try that first? And if not, yes. I'll grab a mirror uh, handheld one. Yes, but okay. So, so you don't need to pull on your eye. Let's not do that. Okay. <laughs> and That's then kind of use the brush right here. I don't know if you can see me. I'll just go a little closer. And mm -hmm. then you want to use it kind of like you're tickling your eye. Okay. And then make sure you're doing it a little bit higher than your actual hood. And then make sure you're just kind of buffing it in circular motions and kind of blending it all together. That's better. There you go. So you do not need to use a lot of pressure and just literally, let me show you the amount of force that I'm using. So I'm using something like Got it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not putting a lot of force right now. Um, okay, is that good? Yes. 
Okay. And then what we're going to do is do the same on the other side. I'm just going to open my notes. Yep. Do the same on the other side. And I have like this odd birthmark right here as well, too. You see where it's already a little dark. So that's oh, yeah. so that kind of so it, because you already have that on one eye, you can kind of balance it with the other eye. Yeah. Or if you want to conceal it, you can totally conceal it. But I mean, you were still going to put eyeshadow on it. So same with the other side. We're going to put the mirror lower or whatever, like the phone you have in front. And just try raising your eyebrows a little. Okay. Oh, that helps. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be like one of your most difficult students yet. I like Oh, you're I'm totally like... cool. I love doing this. I told you, as long as you remember even one thing when you're doing your makeup and it makes it easy for you, I am more than happy. Okay. All right. Does that look okay? All righty. So anytime you feel like your shadow is not blended enough or it looks a little streaky or it, it looks like a little splotchy, the best thing to do is use your ring finger and kind of blend it upward and outward. Got so it. upward and outward. And again, a little pressure upward and outward on the other side. Okay. So what you're doing over here is just so you know what actually is happening is because we have hooded eyes, we kind of lack the shadow that actually forms here on a normal eyelid. So we're kind of mimicking that eyeshadow on our eyes so that I, our, our eyes look more open. Um, next thing you want to do is you have the brush is the right size. You want to go in with a little bit deeper shade. So something that would be around this color, this color, or these three colors, like a darker okay. color. I've got the dark brown. All righty. And then we're going to use it even closer to our eyelash now. So literally on your eyelash, you're going to start tickling it, the brush on the outer corner. Okay. And I'm not going all the way. Mm -mm, not all the okay, way. In. I have a habit of like pulling my eye out. I'm not supposed to do that. Well, I mean, you can, it's, it's not something you're going to get rid of. If you really struggle with like closing your eyes, what you can do is what I like to do is kind of pull on my eyebrow like this. Ah, uh, that's better. And just kind of do it on the outer corner. And then again, if it's not blended right, just kind of use your fingers and blend it on the outer corners. <clears throat> okay and we're not going all the way there nope. nope okay because you really want to create the shadow here so that your eyes kind of look open okay all righty yeah that that tip helps because I have a habit of going like this but yeah like to go up mm -hmm. even if you want to do it like from upper your eyebrow and kind of pull it up yep and that's about good. And then we can kind of like blend the extra part. Okay. All righty. Quick question. If you have something like a pencil, mm -hmm. like a black eyeliner pencil or a brown eyeliner pencil, do we have that or do we not? Yeah, I have my brow pencil with me right now. That's a brow pencil? Yeah. Um, okay. My eyeliner pencil is one of the items that the little one got a hold of. <laughs> I have okay. liquid. I have liquid, but I have to um, purchase. Okay. Funny you mentioned that you have liquid because I've been doing makeup for the last seven years and I'm still not comfortable using a liquid eyeliner. I feel like there is literally no margin of error when you're using a liquid eyeliner, like a little bit of shakiness and it can like, you know, it shows on your eye. I so, usually use pencil as well. Or right. I, yeah, I usually use pencil. Um, mm -hmm. but I've been using liquid on top, but pencil on the bottom. Wow. As long as you think you like, you know, it works perfect for you, but something that it doesn't work, <laughs> but something that, that's what I'm saying. It's always better to have like the easier option than to struggle and then not end up liking it. So I would have, um, these they're living like they're from Sephora and um, all you got to do is on your lid, you're going to rub it like this. So super gentle. Every time you're doing your makeup, you just want to make sure kind of work with your angles. Like just don't do any makeup. Just sit one day and kind of see what is like the best angle for you to work on your face. Um, so I would just put it like this and literally just the tiniest bit closer, to, like literally on my lash line. And 
just use my fingers and blend it. Should I try to use liquid right now since that's what I have mm -hmm. or no? You have an eyebrow pencil. Yeah, let me use that then. Okay. Completely fine. Okay. And so I'm gonna use your, your And with this, you can kind of go all the way in, but not like too inside your inner corner, but. Mm -hmm. All righty. I think part of the struggle is I've never looked into a phone to do my makeup before. I'm always looking up at a mirror. Right. So, okay. All right, and I, I do see that you do. I, I believe that's a habit, habit because you told me you're used to doing winged eyeliner is you're pulling it a little bit too A little back too far? Mm -hmm. So what you wanna do is kind of just blend it over here. And the best guide for us hooded eyed girls is that your lash, last eyelash is your guide to where your eyeshadow should stop. Say that one more time. Your last lash, like literally the last lash you have on your eye is the guide of where your eyeshadow should stop. Okay. Okay. Got it. See, I thought it was the opposite this whole time. I thought if you had hooded eyes or smaller eye or even smaller eyes, you want to go for the more dramatic, the wing, just to make your eyes look bigger. You well, you, if you have smaller eyes, yes, and I would do like a straighter outer wing, but I would do it only on events because that's like a little bit too dramatic for every day. Um, but for an every day, you really just want to work with what like the space you have, and because I feel like there's more margin of error, then you get a balance both sides, and then one ends up looking like a little bit more higher and then lower, and then you get frustrated every day. So for my every like this is my everyday makeup, and I yeah. do not use foundation. I do not use really heavy concealers. I just use a tiny, tiny bit of everything and that's about it. Um, okay. All right, so I do also notice that um, you bring your eyeliner back in here. I know a lot of people like doing that, like on the lower lash. Mm -hmm. um, what we can do is, if you wanna do that, good. But one thing for small eyes, like you mentioned, um, a white eyeliner. Do you have a white eyeliner to go mm -hmm. in your waterline? No, I don't. I have white eyeshadow though and a, a thin brush. Um, we can try, but again, like this is something, you know, if you wanna if you're gonna have a list to get things after our Yes, season. I've actually never even thought about purchasing white eyeliner before. So this is a good tip. It just opens up your eyes because um I know a lot of Did people I try the flat brush and the white eyeshadow mm -hmm. or just okay. Let me get the flattest one I can. Oh, okay. I found a really thin one. And what you, if you're using an eyeshadow, what you want to use is like you have a lot on your brush, kind of dab it on the back of your hand so you don't have like a lot of powder entering your eyes. Got it. Literally, what you got to do is put it, push it like this. So if I would have a flat brush, I would use this as a guide and then just go in right here. Oh, that looks so good. Do you have like watery eyes? Because I struggle with that. Like, uh, sometimes, like I, my eyes tremble a lot. Like they shake a lot when I do makeup. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes it's dry. Sometimes it's wet. It just really depends. Gotcha. Okay. Am I going all the way or? You can. I, I usually avoid this area because it's like your tear duct is here. So if you have watery eyes, that's why I asked you. If you have watery eyes, kind of avoid that area. You're good. Like like you told me, you don't have a lot of watery eyes. So that's good. All righty, girl. Okay. Oh, the white makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. It makes your And then once you add mascara, you're going to see a really good, like, a huge difference in your eyes for sure yeah. um next what we're doing is now that we're talking about your upper eye and kind of shape of your eyes eyebrows um with hooded eyes one thing you want to make sure do you have your eyebrow pencil i do and quick question do you have a brush something like this which would have like perfect so what you want to do is kind of brush upward and outward And then what you can also do is kind of like on the outer corner, do like upward strokes and outward strokes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
I haven't gotten my eyebrows done in a minute too, which I'm realizing now. <laughs> That's totally cool. Okay. Alrighty, so you would wanna use this part. And what I like to do with, um, again, because we are discussing hooded eyes, um, try not to drag your eyebrows all the way down here because the more you drown, drag your eyebrows down, this is what's going to happen. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. The shape of your eyes and then that because it defines your. So what you wanna do is kind of lift it up. So I like to brush it out and it kind of gives it that lift. Okay. And then I usually do not go on the outer side of my eye, eyebrow, but if like you would just want to use this right here. Okay, so you just stay right here. Mm -hmm. You don't go this way. I feel like you have really like a very good defined tail to your eyebrow. If you kind of skip it, it's just like me. It's not going to be like something that you would be able to see or something. Okay. All righty. And then what I like to do is tiny little strokes right here in this part. And then use the end of the brush and kind of just blend, blend, blend everything together. And when you blend everything together with the brush. Okay. And then use the other side for the, we're using the brush. All right. Yep. Yeah. So kind of just blend it. And what this does is, this literally drags the product you just put here and kind of goes all the way on your brow. So the ends that you miss are kind of have a product in them now. Okay, got it. All righty. And then next thing what you want to use is I know you have a concealer and then a tinted moisturizer. That's what I use. I literally have like, I like using this as a concealer. I feel like you can work with the coverage of it and then a tinted moisturizer. A okay, cream. great. Or you're good. So what you want to do is you want to use the concealer and kind of warm it in your hands. Again, you're going to put some on the back of your hand. Like I would use this. So just tap, tap, tap. Yep, on the back of your hand. And then just warm it up with your fingers. And then what you want to do is really focus on the inner corner and drag it in a lifting way up here. Yep. Okay. And then what I also like to do is kind of bring it on the side of the nose. Like if we contour the nose later, it kind of helps it look more skinny. And then I literally use my um, fingers on every day, but when I'm doing like a foundation, concealer, highlight, contour, I would use a beauty blender. If you drag, um, if you're using brushes, I feel like sometimes you're putting on too much pressure without even realizing, and you're just like literally dragging and yeah, I've got, and my, I've got my sponge here. Very good. Okay, so let me just balance it out on the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if you want to blend a little bit first with your fingers, I feel like that gives the most flawless coverage ever. Okay. All right. And then dab, dab, dab. Anything on your face, you should never drag. Like, here's the rule. Like, oh, don't drag. Okay, okay. It's not good for your skin. So, like, just dab, 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 dab. And it gives you the most perfect amount of Oh, that coverage. definitely does give, like, an eye lift for sure. Mm-hmm. And then anytime you feel like you've pulled it too forward, you can use the same blender and kind of fuse it between your eyebrow and a little bit of your eyelid. So right here on the outer corner. Okay. Yep. And then a little bit over here. There you go. Okay. All righty. I think the eye makeup is what I struggle with the most. Like everything yeah. else kind of flows, but the like with eyeshadow, it's like, I have no idea. All right. So one more thing now that you mentioned is... I love using my bronzer and my blush on my eyes. That is something, it's, it shouldn't be to a point where it's like too much on your eyes, but let me give you an example. So if I'm using my bronzer, this is my favorite palette. Um, so if I'm using this right here and I'm going like this, what I would do is I would just take it and kind of go all over the outer half of my eye and just blend it. It is just kind blush? of blends everything together. Um, this was the bronzer. That was the bronzer? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then 
But before we go to the bronzer, let's just fix what we did on the other eyes, under eyes. And then if you want to use your tinted moisturizer. Okay. Um, and the way I like to use a tinted moisturizer is, so you would use a little bit right here. And then what you want to do is blend it in your fingers like this and warm okay. it up. And okay. then once you warm it up, you want to kind of slap it all over your face and then blend it. Okay. So it gives you the most even, light, and flawless finish on your face. Okay. I definitely dragged a lot before talking to you, so now I know to tap, tap, tap. <laughs> I, well, I think I might have been making, like, every mistake in the book. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> Everybody I've known has been making. I had to this day make some mistakes, and then I later find out you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> so you're good. Let me just pull out. Okay. okay. And a little tip that I would like to give is I'm reading the notes as I'm doing is if you struggle with hooded eyes, we use a lot of browns and blacks and any dark shades to create shadows. You would want to do your eyes first. Okay. That is like how I like to do it because if I have concealer or like anything drop on my concealer, like an eyeshadow, that's like my pet beef. I cannot work if I have like on your concealer. It kind of ruins your face makeup. Um, and Alrighty, so now that we have that, do you want to use a blender and kind of just blend, tap, 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 everything? Do that. Everything looks flawless that way. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Um, so with bronzer, you always want to use an angled brush. I'm not sure if you have one. Yeah. All right, perfect. So you would go in your bronzer shade. Do you have your face powder? Let's just set the face first. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, so the way I like to use my face powder is, that's what I love this um, Charlotte Tilbury one. It, it gives you the most perfect skin finish ever. Like I've been hearing a lot about Charlotte Tilbury and I need to invest in some of that, so. I think in the product recommendation pages that I send you, I did actually mention one of their face powders. You if did. you have struggling, like I know a lot of my clients, they're like, they want to have me when they're makeup shopping because just to know the right shade and stuff like that. If you ever want to do that, like you can always just text me, send me a picture, see if that's the right shade for you. Oh, well, thank you. I already appreciate this. I love, I'm already learning so much. All righty, perfect. So I don't know if you your under eye creases, but my under eye tends to crease a lot. And by creasing, I mean the foundation tends to settle in your fine lines under your eyes. So what you wanna do is just kind of blend it. And once it's still blended and not creased yet, you would wanna take your powder, kind of dab off the excess. You always wanna tap off the excess and you wanna go underneath. And again, we're not dragging with it. We're just tapping it in until it's fully blended. And then we can also pull a little bit on the side of our nose right here. What this does is kind of takes away the shadow that your nose naturally forms on your face. And that way you can contour and give your face like a new shape if you want. Yeah, my nose definitely looks smaller. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Same on the other side, we're gonna take it and literally right on the inner corner, dab, 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 drag it on the side of the nose, all the way down to the nostrils. And then we're tapping again. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> Every time you're doing makeup, you should start saying tap, tap, tap in your heart to kind of like, so you're not dragging. Oh my God, this is so out of my comfort zone. You can tell I'm oh like, my... I'm like, I know. Stressed, like, you know am I doing it right? I don't know why makeup stresses me out so much. It really just does. Yeah, well, that's the thing I always tell my clients. Makeup should never stress you out. You can always kind of use what you want, skip what you want. There are no rules to makeup. Okay, so I guess okay. blending it out now? Yes. Tiny, gentle little dab dabs. And then you can kind of pull it now that you're using a sponge, kind of pull it down. Okay. Tap that on your cheeks just to set everything that we just used. Okay. And then I also love using it on the side of my nose right here. Gotcha. 
here. Exactly where you like the nose sits on your skin, you want to blend over here. Okay. Perfect. And then you just bend or your fingers and literally just like press it in. So it's like not forming a lot of cakiness or something like that. And because we didn't use foundation, you're not going to have any cakiness. Give me just a second. Okay, sorry, I'm getting calls that my daughter is running a fever. Oh my God, I yeah, I saw that. I hope everybody's feeling better now. I don't, it, it just keeps happening. Like she finally got better and now they're messaging me that she's sick again, so. Um, okay, sorry, I just had to respond back to that. Um, it's really fine, so again, to this little, like a bronzer, contour, palette, whatever you have. Okay. So we're gonna take you the contour or the bronzer. Okay. The other day, I believe, is when you did like your the outfit you did from India and you did like a quick little makeup thingy. Yeah. I saw that and I and I was like, I need to mention this like when we get on our call, is I saw that you were literally dragging. Oh, so this is tap, tap, tap as well? Yep. So this is like tickle, like something we would do on our eye just so that you would want to use this part as your guide. So you want to do like little tiny soft motions. And the best way to start is from up here. So okay. you would start up here and blend, 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 and go down. There we go. Okay. And um, sometimes I feel like, like when I've lose, lost a lot of weight, I feel like um, I want to make my face look whiter. So you do like a more straighter angle. If you want your face to look slimmer, you want to do like an angle. Yeah, I usually like the angle so that it doesn't right. as much as like that a baby face. how it should be. <laughs> yep. And. Okay. And then one, one more thing what we really tend to forget to do is really blend on this part. So this part does not leave any harsh lines and it kind of makes it look like it coming it's coming in from like your actual skull there we go got it yeah this needs to be perfect okay and um anytime you feel like I get carried away with blush so what I like to keep in hand is the um face powder that we used or a brush and a brush that we used so just keep that in hand because we might get carried away with blush. Okay, so, sounds um, good. And with brush, like fluffier brush, right? Because I use like yes. Yeah, so one. with contour, blush, and highlight, the fluffier, the better. The more airbrush, the more flawless finish you will kind of get. Okay, perfect. So I like to mix both of these. I would just go in. I just have this one right now. Oh yeah, that's totally fine. Fancy. That's I actually used. Um, I used to work at MAC and I worked there for like almost three years as a makeup artist. So I love MAC products, like everything MAC is good. So you're okay, good. Good. So what you wanna do is kind of start where your contour is so that the most amount of pigment kind of blends in with your contour and you don't have like a- You know, I pigment. always started over here. That was always a mistake I made. And you wanna dab off like this. Right. And then you want to start right here and kind of go in circular motions and bring it to your cheek. Because I feel like when you start your makeup from over here, that is where you're depositing the most amount of product. Mm -hmm. And usually we can hide this part right here and it's usually hidden behind our hair and stuff like that. Right. So it's always better to kind of start here, kind of blend it and then kind of just slowly drag it on your cheeks and then we're good okay. all right already looking more human <laughs> i'm really trying to like exactly see like i have you zoomed in i'm trying to see exactly oh that looks really pretty what shade is that pink <laughs> don't know <laughs> that's fine i mean it's pretty similar to the one i use so you're good um and like you mentioned, makeup is like literally stressing you out all the time. Like I feel you. Yeah. Um, 
The best thing to do when that happens is limit the amount of products that you use. So use multifunctional things like have one face palette that would have like your contour, blush, highlight, everything in it. So you don't have to gra gravitate towards like 10 different products just to do your skin. That is why I have like my highlighter, contour, blush, lighter blush, all cool. good. That's actually a really great tip. Can you show me how to use the bronzer and the blush on my eyes? Because I've never done that before. Yes, we're going to come to that. So the brush that you use for your bronzer, if we can take that. Okay. And what you want to do is kind of pinch on the bristles. So it's like a little bit more flatter. Yep. And then you're going to take your contour shade. Anything that goes on your face has to kind of like swipe away from on your hand so that it's not too much not too overpowering on your face and then with it pinched you're literally just going to put it like this and just fluff it up we're not putting any pressure it's literally just tickling against our skin yep and then you just want to lift it up like that mm -hmm. and kind of go up and same on the other side and what i like to do is I like kind of that and just kind of blend everything together. Where were you in my life 10 years ago? <laughs> oh, 10 I'm, years ago. Okay, so like that, does that look? Mm -hmm. That looks really good. I, you just changed the game for me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All righty. Uh, and so we're not putting all the way in, right? We're no, just so, mm -hmm. The idea is kind of just to make this part of your eyes kind of pull forward because anytime you're putting um, a deeper, darker eyeshadow, you're kind of pushing mm -hmm. it in. That's what eyeshadow is supposed to do. And because we have this lid forward, we're, we're trying to push it backwards, making this part a little bit forward. So we're kind of pushing this by putting darker shadows here. And that's what we kind of did with the bronzer. Um, one more thing, what I like to do is just to make things a little bit more corrected and balanced out, we're going to use um, the face brush that we used right here. And for face brush. Sorry, give me just one second. Nosh, Nosh, can you drop off Tylenol to my parents' house for Jamal? Okay, can you drop Tylenol off? Sorry, I, they're just, my dad is panics when he has a... Uh, I hope your daughter's feeling fine. They're, they're just overreacting a little bit. I know, and your dad loves your daughter so much. I see it yeah. on TikTok all the time. <laughs> like, your mom and dad are li literally obsessed with it. They're, they panic when she's even slightly. It's a low grade. Not sure taking it, right? Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. They, uh, my dad has called me like five times panicking that she's at 99 and I'm like, it's 99. Like she'll be all right. Oh, okay. No, fine. This um, is real life of moms trying to balance, <laughs> balance things. Okay. I, alrighty. So we're going to take the same powder. And, um, what I was t telling you before um, we started talking is having this, a blush, uh, a brush that is fluffy. Okay. That's a little bit more sturdier, something that I would gravitate toward, like contouring my nose, kind of doing perfect. So we're going to do this, tap off the excess, and just go where we went before and just blend, blend, blend. Okay, so we're just like and, touching up a little. Yes, so that like anything that we have over blending or the shadow that has moved kind of comes back. One more thing that I would say is... Um, the more product you use, the more cakier or the more makeup-y it's going to feel like. Like, I'm, only if you could see my skin in real life. Like, it feels like I have nothing on my skin. I can literally blend or do whatever. Yeah. And the key is to blend and use layers, thin layers of product. As long as you're working in thin layers, everything's in your control. Okay. So, um, okay, got it. Um one thing I was going to mention is that I don't even like using eyeshadow almost ever. Like mm -hmm. the only time I'll use eyeshadow is like if I have to go to like a wedding. So okay. for every day, this is actually fantastic to be able to use the bronzer and the blush so that I can. Um, right. And um, coming back to the eyes, we did use like, um, so I did mention we can use, uh, where did I go? This brush right here. 
And now that we're working with creams, that's going to be like our last step that I'm going to talk about. But let's just do our. I have thing. something that's similar. Is that shiny? Yes. Okay, no, we need something matte and we need something dark. So like a gel eyeliner pencil. Um, I can send you some good recommendations if you want. Uh, yes, please. But for now, that's fine. Like you mentioned, you're not, if you usually don't use eyeshadows on your eyes. Yeah, I think I have like one more, but it's also a little bit shiny. Let me show you what I've got. No, I can't find it right now. I'm sorry. Well, that's cool. Um, we'll come to the eyes later. What we want to do right now is go ahead, girl. God, this is uh very cool. Well, I'm just I'm frustrated because it's like like Aww. we've been so sick for three weeks. I finally thought she was better today, and now the fever spiked again. So oh my god, I hope she feels better, and I hope you get like a weekend to rest just to take care of her I hope so too but yeah no my husband's was able to do it and so now we should be able to to finish without perfect. distractions perfect so again kind of go in with this okay and what you want to do is right here mm -hmm. and we start back up here as well mm -hmm. and you just want to kind of blend it so it doesn't look like you kind of shaping your face the way you want to Mm -hmm. And then what I like to do is use your blush brush and kind of just blend everything back together, just like gently all over. So it's like nothing too harsh because anything that's too harsh or streaky doesn't kind of look really good. Yeah. Right now it's a little harsh. Mm -hmm. So definitely just kind of go back with your blush brush or your um, makeup sponge and you can just like dab everything in together. And then tap, tap, tap. Because what happens is anytime you're dragging, you're kind of moving the blush downwards and we don't want it. Like, yeah, literally work on placements on when you're doing like your face makeup. So just tap, tap, tap and you are good. Oh, you look gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Learning oh. so much. So many little things that I just was not doing the right way or doing the opposite of what, you know, is intuitive. Yeah. And so, yeah. That's I mean, what it that's what I always tell my people. I'm like, you can use, like, look at YouTube and TikToks and stuff like that, but it's not for your face. Like, you know, either you know your face too well and you can kind of maneuver how you want to, what you see on TikTok and YouTube. But usually a lot of people don't really know how, what, they're not really familiar with their features. And like you mentioned, you didn't even know what, like, what did I actually meant until today? I always so, heard it and I just didn't know what it meant. Right. So for hooded eyes, um, okay, do you, Okay, highlight is a preference. So do you use, like using highlighter? I love highlighter. Okay, so what you wanna do is grab your highlighter. I So use your highlighter. I ask that because placement in highlighters is really, really important. And if you are someone who would use highlighter every single day, you really need to be sure of the placements that you're putting your highlighter on. So yeah. I know a lot of people kind of just go here, but I always tell my clients, you have pores here. Even if you're super dry, this is the part that would get a little bit shinier. So let's not put a lot over here and just kind of go on the highest point of your cheekbone right here and then just blend it. So I would do it like this, like a little bit more. Just blend right here. I think here. my brush is not big enough. I have to use a... A little bit of a larger brush. Perfect. Kind of lower and right over here. Just when the light hits it, it's, it has like the perfect amount of glow. And same for over here, right over here. And then you want to have like that big um, blush brush that you had. And what you want to do is literally just blend, 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 wipe it off everything. And this is like my favorite part where everything comes to life as you want to blend everything from underneath your eyes to the temple of your cheeks in together. And everything's just flawless and all blended in together. Okay. And there are no harsh lines. There's no line that you contoured or there's like no harsh blush. Um, Coming back to your um, 
knows. We're going to use the same. Okay, so here's the thing. With bronzers, you can bronze, and it's a lot of people, and that's something really like on a really professional level. It really doesn't matter if you're doing it every day, but bronzer is just to give you a sun kissed look. If you're going to use a contour, you need something that is more ashier, something that is more gray to form shadows and literally like you can shape shift when you have something like this. Okay, um, I don't have now, anything like have, that yet. Yep. So if you have an eyeshadow or anything like that, if not the contour palette, just kind of go in with your bronzer shade. Okay. Dab, dab, dab. You want to make sure you're not putting on barely any product because your nose, once you have something on your nose, it's hard to get it off, be it blush, foundation or whatever. So you want to really blend it off on your hand. What kind of brush are you using right now? Like an eyeshadow brush that you used would work perfect. Something that's not too fluffy. And something that's not too stiff. Okay, got it. I got it. So kind of just dab it. And then what you want to do is start from over here, right between your eyebrows. All righty. And we're going to drag it gently. I'm barely putting any pressure on my face. And then just kind of right over here. And then right over here on this part. Your nose um, does have a beautiful, like perfect balance between the lip and the nose. So you, you do not have to um, contour underneath your nose. You're totally cool with that. And um, just gently. So the best, if you're new to it and um, something if you struggle with is to put a brush like this and then just go like this and kind of go like this. This kind of, yep, right along the brush. Yep. And what? Oh, okay, 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 I see. Mm -hmm. And okay. what I see is like, so let's, I don't know if, you, if I can show you this, but um, so if this is your nose, right? Mm -hmm. You only want to put your contour here. So we're not going down here with the contour. Okay. Perfect. This is something you wouldn't have to do every day. I feel like this yeah, because I don't typically mess with my nose ever. Like I right. just go like this, and I just go like this, and I'm. And then we're gonna take this um, same powder brush with a little bit of powder, and now we're gonna do it right underneath, right here. So where your nostril is, kind of go up there. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Okay. And then a little bit over here. This actually makes your, this part wider in a sense where this is your face and your nose more pulled forward and a little bit more snatched. And then use your blending brush and blend, 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 blend. We're really doing something like when you would go out or like, you know, when you want to do, when you do actually want to put in some effort on your face. Perfect. Got it. All right. Um, I know for eyeliner, currently what you have is a liquid and a stamp, right? Yes. I would say avoid using that if you can. Um, if you really want to start and because you do not have watery eyes is your best, best practice. And this is something I would be like, if you don't get anything else, just get this because I know you do your eyes every day. Um, so what you want to do is take a tiny brush. You get it at the Morphe store and Amazon, I believe. You can order it, however. I have the same one. Yeah, the Morphe. Right. Perfect. So we're going to take that. And so this is the eyeliner that I'm using. This is an, like a water-based eyeliner. So it's like a cream, but every time you wet your brush and kind of go in, it gives you the most beautiful eyeliner. Okay, so I don't have that specific so What you can do is kind of just wet your brush and go on the corner of your eyeshadow and let's use that as liner for now. Okay, so so let me grab just a little bit of water, okay? Mm -hmm. Give me yep. one second. Yep.
Okay. Right. And I'm going to really come close to you. And um, what I would want is you kind of look at what I'm doing first. So okay. if you're using this brush, do you see? So even if I'm moving, like, you know, if I even if I'm shaking my hand, the the line's not crooked as much as it would be in the liquid eyeliner. Yes, with liquid right. eyeliner, you barely have any margin of error and a little bit of movement actually comes off on your eyeshadow. So what you want to do is a long brush and just put it flat and then just drag it. And it okay. gives you the most perfect straight line ever. We're going to, and for this, again, we're going to have to kind of look down like a mirror down here. Um, where did my mirror go? And I'll set my phone. Oh, you're using your phone. Okay. All right. And what you want to do is raise your eyebrows and let's not pull on the eyes. I know you have a habit. I have a habit of pulling too. So you're cool. And then you want to start from over here. Okay. Right here. And you're just going to lay it flat on your eye, like the literally the lid where your eyelashes meet is you're going to have it flat over here and pull and then lay it flat and then pull. I know people are like, every time I'm doing video calls with my clients, they're like, you make it look so easy. You like do. I need <laughs> I hope I'm just like kind of explaining it because like no, you, you're doing a great job. Makeup just freaks me out. Like you shouldn't, girl. Oh, you know no. what it is too? It's, it's like performance anxiety. Because like if I'm doing it at home and I mess up, but like I feel like I'm doing it on camera right now, the, which is so funny because normally I'm like very like well spoken. I can speak, I can write, and no <laughs> worries. But this is like me at my most vulnerable, like is like the thing that I'm like not good at. So. You're the right person for it. I appreciate your patience. Okay, no, so let's again, so we're gonna do that. Just lay it really flat and thin and pull it out, flat and thin and pull it out. So um, with hooded eye, just to give you a little bit more example, because I know this is something that's gonna take a lot of practice um, and like just tiny little things you start doing every day. Um, one thing that I really want to mention is um, harsh lines, straight lines, winged eyeliners is something that kind of, if you can do it, I would want you eventually do it and you can do it. It's nothing you cannot do, of course. But as a best practice to hide your errors if you're not good at makeup is to use that um, cream-based eyeliner and pull it and then what I like to do is like I mentioned just blend it so it kind okay. of smokes out like that okay and then kind of this is what you want to do on your eyelid and then you want to take your eyeliner right here and then after you've done that just kind of line on the smoke so this is the kind of gradient that we want in on our eye okay how's that looking so far to you that looks really good Okay. Well, it's nice to know that I can use eyeshadow as like an eyeliner. I've never really done that before either. Yeah, if you really want to, like, this is something for you to practice, of course, but um, you can use a makeup setting spray on your brush and use that. It kind of gives it more longevity for your eyeliner. But um, I mean, your eyes look really pretty and it looks so open up. Oh, thank you. I think that white eyeliner made a, or the white made a huge difference because mm -hmm. that's something I never do. So seeing that the, the impact that makes, it makes me feel like I'm more awake, more alert. Oh brighter. yes. It kind of takes away the redness. And I know we're from like India and Pakistan. What people tell you is like, if you really want to make your eyes look bigger, put on like the kajal, like that black thing. It kind of, it, it makes your eyes smaller. Like it makes it prettier like deeper and darker and more ethnic, but it, it makes your eyes shorter because black kind of just hides everything. So right. when you add white, it looks more pulled forward, more open, more wide. I all like, even when I'm doing my brides, I usually recommend them do not go for a, <clears throat> a blacker waterline because it's, you're gonna cry, it's gonna smudge, 
and your eyes are going to look small. Unless we're doing a smoky, I always prefer a white or a beige one. You never put any black eyeliner on the bottom. You, it's, it's generally white for you? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a big difference for me. So I'm going to have to go <laughs> yeah. buy some white liner uh, soon. But I think that's also good because then it looks too dark. Like, right. And things right. smudge over time too. Like that's one of my biggest mm-hmm. problems is that all throughout high school, my eyeliner would smudge and it would just look too dark. It would look too emo all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That's, again, I have watery eyes so I cannot mess with black underneath my eyes. Like I look like a panda. <laughs> like but um already on the occlusion oh you look so pretty it's like um i know it's very lifted yay means we're doing our job um okay so um something like this like a tiny fluffy brush i usually do not tend to put a shimmery eyeshadow here. I've seen you put a highlighter in your inner corner. I love that. And I feel like you love it. So we're still going to do it, but we're not going to do it like to a point where it kind of overshadows everything we did. So we're going to take a tiny, tiny brush. I'm actually going to switch to this brush. Um, And if you're starting with makeup, um, the best thing I would say is brushes are tools. And if you're not doing professional makeup you do not need to invest in really good expensive brushes like a brush at mac costs 35 to 45 dollars a piece yeah you do not need to spend so much money on it um i believe real techniques morphe has some amazing brushes and they're only like four dollars five dollars once you feel like they're not performing well that's the brush i have that's that's all i have too so you're good with that so we're going to use like a tiny tiny taper brush alrighty and then we're gonna use this the highlighter okay and what we're gonna do is I feel like what I've seen you do is kind of pull it down here and then kind of pull it up here right yeah Yeah. so what you want to do is literally where it kind of forms a v on your eye you just want to put a tiny dot there okay so like this right here, and we're just gonna put a tiny dot here and then kind of use our fingers to blend it instead of putting um, like an actual brush stroke down here. Oh, that looks so pretty. Again, I have watery eyes. So this is something I don't usually gravitate towards. And also um, because you mentioned you like it, the reason behind doing a highlighter in your inner corner is when your eyes are set a set apart, like they're wide set and they're like, so how do I put it in words? Um, if you have if you have your eyes really close to each other and you have a narrow bridge of your nose, that is when you would want to put a highlighter here, something like I would want to because um, I have big eyes. So like if this doesn't fit right here, like, so if I'm measuring my eye and the space between my two eyes is equals to I feel like my our face eye. is very similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when I'm so, looking at you, the, like, our face shape and our eyes are, so, like, you were the best person to teach me because it's, like, we, we, actually, look, the same we actually look a lot alike. It's kind of, it's kind of weird, but I kind of love this because I can <laughs> see, like, if I knew what I was doing, I could look like you. It's very motivational. Oh, no, of course. So what you want to do is a um, tiny bit, not too much, because this actually increases the distance between your eyes. Because What happens is anytime you're putting putting a shimmery or a highlighter shade, the light catches it. And then if you have highlighter right here and this is what's prominent, that's what the light is catching, your eyes look more distant apart. God, but look- I was doing way too much. So what I'm taking away from this is just a little dab right in the corner. Mm-hmm. And looking at you, you do have like wide apart, really like beautiful eyes. I wouldn't use a lot of highlighter because that's just going to make them more pull forward, like pull apart from each other. Okay, so, perfect. All righty. Ooh, look at you. And then my favorite part, what pulls everything together is a mascara. Got it. A question for you, though. You mentioned you even put blush on your eyes. Right. So where does that go? Does that go in the inner? Because we did the bronzer here. No, exactly the way you did bronzer. 
depending on um, if you want to give a shadow to your eyes, you would use a bronzer or if you just want to, like on days, I do not put on bronzer. I only do my blush. So just to make everything put together, the days I'm doing just my blush, I would do a blush over here. Usually I, when you're I'm a bronzer girl, I prefer bronzer. Over bronzer over. Just stick to your bronzer or if you want to give it a little bit more flush of color, or like, you know, just put a little bit of blush on top of the bronzer, but it's nothing like something pink on your eyes or a blush tone that you can see on your eyes. It's just something that's going to pull your face together. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. All righty. So what we're going to do is mascara. And um, something that I like to tell people, and sometimes I feel like makeup, um, you go to Sephora, Ulta, it's too overwhelming. And makeup is very pricey. Like, I'm going to be honest. I work, I've been buying makeup ever since I was 16. And I know it's really, really expensive. And not a lot of people have the resources to buy, like, you know, really expensive makeup. Invest in good certain products. If you really, like, I get carried away and I just splurge on makeup. Invest in good things. For mascara, I this is my opinion, and everybody has opinion. I would never invest in a $35 mascara. Number one, you're only supposed to use mascara for 90 days, I believe. After that, you're supposed to toss it. It grows bacteria inside. Ever since you open it, it's growing bacteria inside it. So you have to toss it every 90 days, every for me, 45 days because I'm like a little germaphobic. So um, I like to toss it and I am not throwing away a $35 mascara every single month. So what I like to do is Ulta. Um, this is my favorite mascara. It's, I believe, $3.99. Oh, that's amazing. Not... I've never seen that. Yeah, I've just been using this. That is also really good. And yeah. again, drugstore. I love drugstore mascaras. Do you, put it on, do you put it on on the bottom lashes as well? I do. And for that, I have no idea how to do that without getting it onto my skin. Like I've never been able to put bottom mascara on. Okay. Good thing you told me that. And I will tell you to, uh, some tricks and what I like to do for my brides. I'm not sure if I can um, see it right here, but I'll tell you a mascara and it has the perfect wand for you to kind of go under your eyes. Um, only if I could show you better. But yeah, once I feel like my, eyes, my lashes are really small too, like mm -hmm. really small. So I don't know if it makes it an extra challenge or if I'm just like, mm -hmm. like I can never do my body. If you lashes. struggle with that, you're going to use, so you, if we can get brushes like this, right? Like a tiny spooby and you want to kind of dab it like this. Okay. And, um, and then what you want to do. Let me try that. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing, you do not have to put mascara, the wand on your eyelash and do it. All you got to do is just gently on the hair, kind of drag it back and forth. Once it's coated with product, you're going to brush it down. Okay. This way, you're not, yeah, this way you're not actually using the wand, which already is loaded with product, which is, I mean, I do that all the time. And then again on this side, just kind that's of a good. That's a good, good way to get it on. Mm -hmm. And there you go. But it the mascara I would recommend that works perfect for this is the Mac Extended Play. It has the tiniest, 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 tiniest. I'm trying to see if I can see it here. Um, tiniest wand applicator on it, and it's perfect for lower lashes. Like if you struggle with that, that is one thing I would definitely. Recommend. Yeah, I got a little bit on, but not not a lot. Mostly because I don't have the right the right brush right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's fine. That's something like you know, if you ever go out to buy stuff, like that's something that. Can yeah, that's gonna, going on my list. I've got a whole shopping list after today. <laughs> I'll text you if you want. I'll text you the. That would be list. awesome. Thank you. Um. So. Again, for us hooded girls, especially you and me, what we want to do is kind of pull it out and then drag it up. And on the outer corner, you want to pull it out and then drag it up. And um, I like to deposit my product at the root of the eyelash. So I like to wiggle, just hold it and then wiggle it and then slowly push it up. Okay. 
And if you're doing this every day, it literally takes you 10 minutes. Like we're talking and you're kind of doing it with me. Yeah. I feel like that was taking so long. But if you're doing it every day, it's literally just going to take you five to 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. No, this is this is fast stuff. But there's little tips and tricks that you're talking me through that like how to get the product on the lower lashes that are going to be absolutely game changing. Mm -hmm. Right. And you would recommend the concealer in the corner of my eyes every day, like for everyday makeup? Um, if you're using your tinted foundation or something like this, yes, because it it kind of helps with the shadow that the hood forms. So just a little bit underneath your eyes and right here, just to kind of lift the lower part of your eye forward instead of this being too forward, it kind of balances your face. Makeup is all about balancing. So it's not like you have to be like, you know, you need to put like tons of makeup and tons of like foundation and layers and layers of makeup. It's all about balancing and placement. Oopsie. Ooh. I got a little bit on my cheek. Okay. So anytime that happens, let it dry. Don't do that. No, no. no, no. Okay. Yeah. Just let it dry. Okay. Forget about it for now. I had a little bit right here, and what I like to do is just kind of forget about it. Um, and using a Q-tip, once it dry, dries down, using okay. a Q-tip, you would just want to like it literally flakes right off once it's dried. It, it should. There you go. Yeah, I think we're almost gone. Okay. Sometimes I like to call my beauty er makeup errors, my beauty spots. Like I would have like liner here, a dot, and I'm like, that's fine. That's a beauty beauty mark. Yeah, no, because I like that. We're not like so focused on like the perfection because that's not me. I'm not like a very perfectionist. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, look fine. Let's go. Like let's, yeah. That is but why I like. It's coming together. It really is. Yep. yep. So for lipstick, do you do a neutral or do you do? I do both. Um, okay. So my rule of thumb that I generally follow is if I'm going dark, heavy on the eyes, I'll stay light on the lips. If I'm going right. heavy on the lips, I'll stay light on the eyes. But that for is every day, I prefer like neutrals. A neutral? Okay. It's funny. And it's good that you mentioned that because that's exactly what balancing your face is. So if you're doing too much contour highlight, you want to tone down on the eyes. You don't want like too much shadow here. You don't want too much shadow here. If you're doing a bold lip you want to do like just a ring or just a blown out very classic eyeliner you don't want to put too much shadow on and um I I love doing a bold lip but that's definitely not my comfort zone my comfort zone is like more neutral browns and something really nude but um for you do you gravitate more towards browns or pinks um I'll show you which one I my go-to it's like a, it's right here. Mm -hmm. So it's like okay. maybe. Okay. Perfect. Gotcha. Something, what I love to do is I, and because I travel with makeup, I hate carrying a hundred lipsticks with me. It's messy, but it's Makeup by Mario. It has every shade in the world. In it. Ooh. And, then you can, and then you can have like darker in it, lighter in it kind of add warmth to it, add two cool tones to it. Oh, I like um, that a lot. And, mm -hmm, and you that's all. Are you that's applying it with like a Q-tip or just a regular brush? It comes with a brush. Okay, great. It does come with a brush and I just dig in on the actual product. One thing that I saw and I learned through TikTok was um, some girls were lining their lips with their eyebrow pencil. That's what I do. I don't know if you've seen my TikTok, but I've talked about it and I do that all the time I've done it today I feel like it makes such a good effect like it looks so beautiful it does and so I know the TikTok you're talking about went really viral and they said that your lip shade is the shade that you would use on your eyebrows yeah something For like that as traditional girls we have really dark eyebrows like I almost use a dark brown on my eyebrow I don't feel like a dark brown on my lips, especially with the complexion I have. It looks like I have a mustache. So it didn't work for me. But what I've been telling my clients, and I've and it's true, eyebrow pencils are the best for your lip line. 
what you want to use is a cool toned eye eyebrow pencil, which is a, almost this shade right here. Okay. So a cool toned, lighter color eyebrow, it makes the most perfect lip shade ever. Yeah, and it works, I think, more or less. So it, it comes out to a lighter shade like that, so. Yep. So what you wanna do is how I tell my people is on the outer corner and then a line. This is something we're not gonna fill our lips in with. This is just for defining the lips and that's all it is for. And then what I like to do is kind of curl my lips inside and make for your face shape. I feel like your lips are beautifully balanced on your face. So thank you. And then same on the upper lid. Ooh, look at that. That looks beautiful. And then what I like to tell you. You're showing me this. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Do that real fast right here and we're gonna kind of pull it on the outer corner more towards outward so we have like that fuller more plump effect just like that and kind of pull it forward and then this is like I mentioned something we're not going to fill in our lips with this is just for you to outline and kind of give your lips the perfect shape so I, I feel like you pulled yours out a little bit more than I did Right, so on the outer corner, right here. And the way I like to do is, you know what? You should really start putting this as a rest to your chin. So it really helps. So like use this and use this and then just go over. It makes your hands so much more stable. And again, even if I'm doing my bottom lip, I would have like my pinky as support right here. Got it, okay. Perfect. Um, I usually like to put on another lip liner on top, but if you don't want to do that and you just, just want to dig right into the, um, lipstick, we can totally do that. But I usually I would, I, I should, I have another one. I have one that's a slightly reddish. I, I believe that's the same as I have. I have something like this. Yeah. It's a pretty tall. Like, yep. All righty. And then we're gonna go over, 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 and that's it. So what is the benefit of using two liners instead of just using this one to begin with? Um, this is, like we said, this is pink, and um, it's the only reason you would use an eyebrow pencil or not two liners or a darker pencil is it creates that perfect gradient and you want something for the outline on off your lips and because this is so thin it kind of gives you that perfect tiny little outline mm -hmm. like a shape as a contour and not a lip liner so this definitely using an eyebrow wouldn't be you considering or using it as a lip liner that is something that you would use to correct this shape of your lip so just like just to draw how you want your lips to be and then you would use a lip liner on top of the eyebrow pencil or the contour shade you kind of just define the shape of your lips with um and then what i like to do is um because i have a brush and you can use any tiny brush for your lips after quick question do you use cream lipsticks or a liquid lipstick? Um, I, my favorite, my personal favorite is, let me see if I can find it in here. I'm all out. I don't think I grabbed it. Um, I think it was Tarte, but I'm not sure. The liquid ones. Mm -hmm. How do you mm -hmm. feel about matte lipsticks? Stella, I'm sorry, Stella. All righty. How do you feel about something that's not too liquid? Uh, I'm fine with matte too. Like that's why this one's my go-to. Perfect. Because I feel like lipstick. Um, oh yeah. So this is Tarte and this is Stila. I love okay. the color. I love the, I love how much Stila stays, like how well it stays throughout the day. But I do prefer more of a matte coat versus like a glossy. I do not like glossy. Same. I would never do glosses. <laughs> I'm so not a gloss person. Stila actually dries to more of a matte look. It's not very glossy. Right. And a liquid lipstick usually dries down, but my only concern with liquid lipsticks 
the longevity is amazing. Um, it's more like if you're not using a lip liner, it needs to be perfect. And it kind of, for my skin type, I'm really dry. It's too drying for me. Like I would have my cracks and everything showing on my lips more than ever. So what I like to do is stick with a bullet lipstick, more matte and more like a creamy matte instead of like a shine or a gloss. I don't do glosses. Yeah, I like it would be perfect for me for today. And the way you want to do it's like da, da, da. And what I like to do is, and I know you don't want to use like a million brushes on your face. So just da, 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 da. And kind I of like everything. I dragged on my lips too. I never dabbed. It just gives, so dragging actually pulls the product, making it more streaky. Whereas dabbing is like kind of pushing the product in your skin and making it look like more natural and not too like dragged or like just too much of the product itself. Mm -hmm. And then what I like to do is just dab. You can use your fingers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with your fingers, just kind of dab it and just make sure we're not going outside the line and everything just kind of blends in together. Okay, perfect. Ooh, perfect. All righty, you look good. Look at you. Thanks. All right. Um, one more thing that I would like to tell a lot of my clients is your foundation, your bronzer, and your face powder literally drinks up your blush. When I started, like when I did my makeup today, I had like really bright blush. I'm a blush girl. I don't know if you are. You told me you're a bronzer. Person. I'm more of a bronzer, but I'm yeah. learning the power of blush. Bro mm -hmm. So okay. if you prefer bronzer I feel like blush just kind of blends and make you more like gives more life to your face so what you would want to do this is my favorite blush this is like a very neutral toned not like your regular pink blush what I like to do is I love this product I will send you like text you this too. yes I'm gonna have to go get some of this and what you want to do is right here it's a cream blush and you just want to dab it and just blend everything together oh yeah i've been looking for a cream instead of a powder mm -hmm. so okay for me right now should i just use my my since i have powder should i just mm -hmm. yep and now i've learned to start here yep so the other way around so i'm picking it up it's not gone to waste <laughs> there we go perfect all right quick question I believe that's the lighting, but I feel like the powder, the face powder, what face powder are you using? Um, I think I was just using the one that's in my contour kit for now. Okay. If you could do like a quick swatch test, does it have shimmer in it? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, so what we want to do is... Stay away from shimmer and... Yeah, because okay. now that you look... Like now that I'm looking at you like straight, I can see a lot of shine over here. And yeah. what I tend to stay away from shine because shine really just kind of enhances texture, lines, and um I have like deep set eyes. So it really just kind of makes my eyes more sunken in. A matte powder. Um, I love the Maybelline Super Stay powder. Perfect. I think I try powder. to get the Charlotte Tilbury. I think, I think you I think. The, the powder really makes the biggest difference. So I think mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to get that one. Oh yeah, you're gonna love it. And if you really like, just wanna try it, I've been using this for six months and it still hasn't hit fan. And this is like their mini one. Oh, wow. And yeah. I always start products with the mini ones to see if I like it and just kind of see where it's going and how I'm wiping with it. But gorgeous and definitely now one thing we didn't do is we didn't do like under and the side should I be doing that okay so I do see that you're so you have a forehead that is like like this I wouldn't contour over here and then right over here your eyebrows and your eyes kind of go down here and we did use um the bronzer pushing it for backward from your eye to your temples okay I feel like for you, that's good enough. And what right about right here? here? Cause I typically for that. Mm -hmm. I know, and I believe you've talked about it. Like you don't know how this part of your face kind of looks, right? I, I know. And my face. You I see have that? the same problem, girl. That, that part right there. Okay. For that, definitely get an eyeshadow or this is from Sephora. I believe this was like 10 bucks. So get a shade like this. 
And okay. what you want to do is it's kind of like a grayish almost. Yes, I will send you a picture of this and the shade. And what you want to do is and match. So anytime you're contouring, bronzing, and blushing, make sure it doesn't have shimmer in it, especially for your face powder. Shimmer in general makes you feel a, I'm sweaty. The matte almost. blurs everything. So it's like flawless perfection and then shimmer kind of accentuates. And I like to put shimmer, but only on the parts where it would really just, I would want it to. Okay. And I'm using this. I believe the Makeup Revolution palette that you showed me for your eyeshadow um, would have a shade like this. So we can use that. Let's see. Um, I also have, well, this one's glowy. No, we don't want the glow. Um, so for you, the best thing would be, and for myself too. Right here? Um, no, can we go to the bottom eyeshadow in the center? That one. That one? Okay. Mm -hmm. And the way we want to use it is, so you don't want to do two down here because sometimes you think, oh, that's how we have to contour. What happens is if you go two down here, you're actually pushing this part forward, making it look even more, like, you know, more rounded. What you want to do is, use your finger as a guide and just where the tip of your finger is you want to put a line there mm, okay and you see how like it literally changes the look of your face yeah and it's so much more defined mm -hmm. and then again I like to use literally where it, I have to make a jaw I barely have a jaw <laughs> so right here and then again just fluffing it and one more thing that I like to do is from over here, I like to pull a line down here. This kind of gives you a slimmer neck, a more defined face. Okay, I've and never done that, so that's a good tip. I'm just like, usually on my bright stool, I do like three lines. That's how I do it. Right here, kind of shorter my chin and go down here. And then just blend everything together. Like this? Yep. Okay, get my little double chin. <laughs> Go to war. I was thinking of getting Kybella down here, but the process is very painful. Yeah, it's just this line because I look down a lot for work. And so this part is. Have you heard about, I believe it's called mewing. I, if I'm pronouncing it right. I've heard all it's sorts of things now. So I'm not 100% sure, but I've heard of Kybella for sure. But yeah, I've heard like holes and insertion I've tried the facial massages but yeah this is very separated but have you the mewing is like you sucking your tongue in so if I have like a double chin and I just suck my tongue in on the roof of my mouth yeah I've it seen doesn't that. push I've, it back and I've I do that, that all the time every time I'm doing pictures I'm like go away yeah I just <laughs> have to posture is the big thing for me right when I'm taking photos, but no, adding those lines down here is helpful because that's not something I used to, I've I've done, and I'm still loving the white under the eyes. I'm loving the bronzer on the on the eyes, um, so that part's all coming together. I do like the the two shades on the lips. That's that's pretty good as well too. I like these little changes a lot. Oh, I'm glad you like it. And on an everyday, like, of course, we're talking about makeup today. On an everyday, you do not have to put a lot of eyeshadow. So I'm just going to talk you through and what you would do. Like, of course, we were just talking about your face type today. But on an everyday, what you would do is just take a little bit of concealer, go on the outer corner and underneath your eyes. You're going to take one brush and just your contour or your bronzer palette and just go over here and outward and on the outer corners, you're not gonna drag it all the way in. And one rule you should always, and I tell my um, clients all the time to remember is the lid on your eyes should not move and the, and the bristles on your brush should not bend. That is how you know you're doing the right job. So these should not bend, they should be like this and the eyes, the lid and the skin should not move so you're just going to tickle on your eyes okay um, just go do the bronzer or the contour on the outer part of your line eye line okay eyes um take a gel pencil or a like a pencil eyeliner do that blend it with your fingers really quick that's literally all i did today blend it with your fingers 
go in with an eyeliner, which is with a brush, which is, or has a brush, um, I mentioned in the list, um, has a brush applicator and not a felt tip and not a liquid eyeliner. And um, if you want to do stamps, of course you can. Um, but again, you would have to angle it in a way where it's not coming on the hood of your eye and kind of just like lay it downwards. Yeah. Yep. And um, that's what you're going to do. Put your mascara on and you're so good. Do you put anything in the crease? Like I've seen that, like makeup artists do a lot in the crease, but with hooded eyes, you don't do that? So what we did first, like the bronzer kind of doing it over here is you defining your crease. Okay. And on the first half, if you really want to do it, but I feel like sometimes it can look a little bit more splotchy, something I wouldn't usually gravitate towards, but take a powder that you're using on your face. I'm not a believer of having a million products, like multifunctional things and you're good. You should not be overwhelmed with makeup. And what you can do is literally like this and just go right here in the center of your eye, right on top of. Okay, and your you're lid. using what right now? You're using powder? Okay, oh. And just go right here. Wait, I like that. So you're mm. using face powder here and you're just using the bronzer here. And I think it will bring, it really balances the face out. It balances everything together. It kind of accentuates your shape. Oh, I like you that. Know. I like yes. that a lot because I'm not an eyeshadow girl. So you've really given me a great alternative today to still look really put together mm -hmm. without having to, um, you know, cause I, I just don't like to go cakey. I don't like to go heavy. So mm -hmm. I like that. So Okay, I'm going to do a quick recap just to make sure I've understood a lot properly. But um, today we started with um, the, oh, gosh, the concealer. We outlined our eyes and then we used a little bit of bronzer. We, instead of, you want me to try and stay away from liquid eyeliner. I'm going to try to go ahead and keep and stick with pencil. If I do use that stamp, it just has to be very careful not to get covered within the hood. Um, really heavy over here on the brows and not as much, and I'll just drag it down there. Um, right. And then we're starting our bronzer and our bl brush uh, blush from here. I used to go like this, so it's the yeah, opposite no. direction. And mm -hmm. the highlighter goes right on top, blend it all out. Um, mm -hmm. Then we did over here and down this. With contouring, we did three lines down. Um, then we used the eyebrow pencil to line. Then we used the other pencil to line. Went right on top. We're going to try to stick with some more matte type of lipsticks. Right. Um, and then I've got to find powder that's not as shiny. Mm -hmm. So I can use the powder here and the bronzer on the edges to bring it out and, and just clean it all up with Blush the blender out. or the blush brush. Just did I, did I learn it. something? Did I have anything? Did I, okay, oh wow, goodness. thank you. So of this course. is where I'm going to hit stop record because I feel like this has been such a beneficial lesson and oh I'm going to be putting your link, Neha, on my Instagram, TikTok, oh on, on the YouTube video so you guys can find her and you can learn from her. But this was just such a great opportunity for me to learn. You guys saw me really scared today, like not knowing what to do. I've never done makeup on a computer. I've always been in front of a mirror. So there was a little bit of that, but I feel like I got so many good tips today and I hope the rest of y'all did too. So thank you, Neha. No, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.